Hello and welcome once again to another whiskey review with myself, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me. And this time we're going to continue looking at what goes into making uh, an Irish blend, an Irish blend of whiskey. Uh, I started episode one, review number one to three, looking at three uh, Bushmill blends. And uh, as I explained at the time, what goes into an Irish blend, I think I explained at the time, that uh, in an Irish blend you will find single malt, single grain and single pot still whiskey. Well, I looked in the last two reviews at single malt, two Bushmill single malts, and this time we're moving on and looking at Teeling single grain. So, Teeling distillery, uh, relatively new distillery down in Dublin, opened in 2015, I believe and uh, producing award-winning whiskies, which we will get into at another time. Uh, so as I say, yes, down in Dublin. And uh, as I say, what is the, this is teeling, this is not teeling whiskey. And I will explain why this isn't teeling whiskey, just before we go too far and get too deep into it. Well, for one reason, I know it's not tailing whiskey is in the very very small print which I would imagine you cannot read right there I struggled to read it and it is disclosed they haven't tried to hide it it's just very small it says that tailing this is produced for the tailing distillery so that would suggest that it was produced for the tailing distillery tailing distillery themselves didn't produce it somebody else has and the giveaway actually is this number here bottled 0317 as I say the Tailing Distillery opened in 2015 I believe and uh, in order for an Irish or Scotch whiskey to be whiskey to be called whiskey it has to spend three years maturing in a wooden barrel and if that's the case this is now 2019, that was 2000, bottled in 2017, the distillery opened in 2015, which means that this wouldn't have been old enough, basically. Uh, so that's that's just a little tip for you there, a little sidetrack. Not bad. Uh, that says that whiskey, as I say, must spend, Scotch and Irish whiskey must spend, by law, three years in a barrel to be considered whiskey. Mm -hmm. So, got that out of the way, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference about where it's made at this point. I mean, you know, as I say, I'll get into that later. There's an awful lot of young Irish distilleries now, an awful lot, and they're putting out whiskey. But they're buying that new make spirit from somebody else. They're buying the whiskey probably from somebody else and maturing, you know, already matured, etc. But as I say, it's a mire, and I'm not going to get into it right now. Let's look at this. So, as I said, three different things go into the production of Irish uh, blends. And this is single grain. You don't see an awful lot of single grain whiskey out there. Uh, it's not something that a lot of them make. Um, and I explained in my review of Bushmills Bush Red, the Red Bush, uh, that there was single grains, quite a grain heavy, making it quite sweet uh, blend. And, I, and I, at the time, I briefly hit upon the fact that single grain whiskey is made differently uh, in column stills, but I, I, I completely forgot or was saving it for this moment to explain what single grain whiskey is. I saved myself there. So this is actually single grain whiskey. And it's, whereas single malt is barley, this is predominantly corn or wheat or rye. Um, and I say predominantly, there's probably other grains used, I'm sure, but that those are the three that tend to get used. And to a certain extent, this is like a bourbon. You know, the bourbon, American bourbons made the same way, using grain predominantly. And as I say, it's that's the difference in flavour, but there is a different way. It's generally made using column stills. Uh, 
there are two kinds of still and whiskey making, pot stills and column stills. And uh, pot stills, they can take many different shapes and forms, as can column stills. Big, small, big production ones are massive. They'll be hidden away somewhere in the distillery, away from the tour that you don't really see them for whatever reason. Pot stills are those big old traditional brass boys with a big round belly that you see. They're, they're, they're what's considered traditional in whiskey making. Column stills uh, invented by an Irishman, um, uh, an S Coffee. So they also get the name Coffee Still sometimes. And I could try and explain how a Coffee Still works, a Column Still, as opposed to a, a Pot Still. But I'm not right up to, <laughs> to spec with what, you know, uh, I know a bit about how it works. I'm no scientist. So I'm not going to try and explain here. What I will do is, uh, is drop a link in somewhere, up here somewhere, to uh, the Whiskey Tribe and Rex and Daniel. And they, I'll let their video, which they put out explaining the difference between a pot still and a column still, I'll let them explain it because they are distillers. They know more so what they're talking about than I do. So there you are. That is pretty much the difference in grain and uh, malt whiskey uh, in very simple terms. So let's actually get into this tealing single grain and see what we think of it. If you were to tell me this was a bourbon without me knowing what's in the glass, I would believe you because it is corn driven all over the nose it's vanilla toffee uh, toffee coins toffee pennies I don't know if, if all around the world you get toffee pennies uh, they came with a, a sweet selection here in the UK and Ireland and it's very very I find it in an awful lot of bourbons it's just generally my initial hit and I find it's coming from corn, it's, it's, it's very corn driven. Now this is finished in uh, wine barrels. I think particularly red wine, I think it's Cabernet Sauvignon barrels, which is it's quite, to me, I find quite strange for uh, such a light whiskey because it's, it's on chill filtered, whether there's colour in it or not. It certainly says that there's no chill filtering and it. it doesn't mention colour. But I wouldn't imagine there's an awful lot of colour in that because, you know, it's it's pretty clear. It's been in red wine, red wine barrels. I don't know how long it's been in red wine barrels, but it's been in there. And I'm convinced, and it could just be the fact that I know it's been in wine barrels, but I'm definitely convinced there is a, there's a wine, there's a grape sensation in it. You know, if you get a good hefty full body red wine and get right into it that's I'm convinced it's on there there's also a hint of and yet again you'll find this in bourbon over ripe banana mint spearmint it's very fresh and very sweet very sweet so what about the palate You see the palate's full on, very, lots of texture, lots of depth, still bourbon like, but, but getting more peppery which would suggest that there, would suggest to me certainly that there's rye in the, in the, in the mash bill as well. Now, there's two words, mash bill, you generally hear mash bill used more in bourbons, American whiskies. Uh, Mash bill is basically the makeup. It's it's the ingredients. It's the percentage of which each grain is used in the, the distillate. And as I said at the start, or in the, in the in the nose in this would suggest that it's corn heavy, but the palate would then suggest, as I say, that there's an awful lot of rye in it as well. Although it may also be quite young. But definitely very very full on. Uh, the delivery and the development are very very split. 
And delivery is really where you get your initial reaction as it enters the mouth and what you're getting there. And the development then is that as you work on it, give it a bit of work in your mouth. Two very, very different things. Lots of caramel. Quite dry, quite astringent. Don't know if the wine had any effect on that, whether that maybe... So the pepper is actually quite overpowering. But it leads to quite a nice finish. It's quite overpowering, but it does leave for quite a long finish. Uh, once again, it's an quite an alcoholic nip in there. And it uh, is yet again quite dry. And I'm noticing a citrusy thing right at the very back. Very good whiskey, I think. Very good quality. And say because you don't see an awful lot of single grain whiskey out there, you're not really maybe getting the chance to try it as much as you would like. And this one stands out then as something different because it is like a bourbon, but it's not like a bourbon either. You know, there, there's enough difference in it to, to, to suggest that it's not bourbon, you know. Now I'm going to add, this is 46% uh, ABV. There's not a lot left in the glass. There's never, I didn't really pour an awful lot. So I'm going to add, I mean, probably if you were having a good glass of this, you probably could be quite... Uh, you could probably give this some water whether it'll take it or not I wouldn't give it a whole lot as it says 46% but it's quite light so even at a higher ABV you could thin it very quickly really well, what it's done to the nose straight away is, is softened it Maybe turn up the uh, the, sp the mint, actually, the spearmint, maybe a tad. It's still very, very rich and sweet and caramel, corn like. Mm. It's turned the pepper down, the water. It's thinned the pepper and it's. It's actually made it more palatable, to be honest. Um, the finish is more rounded, and it becomes more like a, to me like a good what I would suggest a good rye. But without, I find a thing in ryes. I find a lot an awful lot of licorice on on the finish of ryes, which is a thing that I was never a big fan of, because I like my ryes to say, but there's just. I'm not a fan of licorice. So this is like a good rye without the licorice. Mm. Yeah, that water has actually, to me, improved that. It was good anyway. But it's just taken that uh, really, really peppery thing off it. Yeah, very good. Now this is, uh, as I say, single grain. Not see too many of them about. And tealing, as I say, becoming bigger and better and winning awards and etc. For whiskey, which I'm not going to, as I say, get into this because it's it's quite, it's probably a political thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to get myself into, into deep water. It's... Uh, it's whiskey that's been somebody else's. There's the there's a long link between. I would suggest this is actually Cooley whiskey, because there's a long link between the Tailing name and the Cooley Distillery, uh, fathers and sons, etc. And uh, I would suggest that this has been made in Cooley, and that's no bad thing, because in my experience, Cooley make damn fine whiskey. So uh, it's got the Tailing name on it. For all the world, it's tealing whiskey. Let's just go with that. It's good whiskey. If a little bourbon like, but I would highly recommend it to anyone. So that's about that. I'm going to leave that with that and move on. And I'll see you again next time. And for now, here's to your good health. Cheers. 
Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.